hi folks and welcome to a more civilized age uh this is the last edition the uh christmas edition i guess for 2024 i am here once again with my regular co-host ryan from rk outpost meg from the meg reviews and this this month's special guest someone i've been wanting to get on the channel for quite some time even though it's four and i just want to let everyone know at the time of this recording it is four in the morning for luke so he's, he's being quiet He's being respectful to the people in this house. Luke, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me, mate. Glad yeah. to be here. And honestly, it's it's been like a year. So I, I, I've really missed this because it's I haven't streamed or anything. So I'm very glad to be here. Overdue then, my friend. Overdue then. I will not let it go by another 12 months. <laughs> <laughs> Um, always, I put always, this book next December in the calendar right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, 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 July. <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 enjoy, I enjoy talking to Luke. I'm so glad he could come on. This this topic was one that's you know right up his alley. I wanted him in there. Um, I, th I, I believe we talked about. I, I did invite Geeks Attic. I just want everyone to know that there was there was a you know zero zero point one percent chance um, that he was gonna you know. Um, uh, make it but i did anyway because i was just feeling on a high uh for those of you who don't know i got to, i got to actually meet ryan face to face uh i think it was in october um it was great ryan's the same guy in and out uh that you would expect except i will tell you this he he's just all he's just one big trim muscle dude i mean just like just ripped but yet he eats like a vacuum cleaner and he's like you guys want chili fries let's get some chili fries up in here and then he's like oh my god oh my god he's like you guys want a big ass burger let's get one of those too yeah yeah we, we Where's i my did milkshake <laughs> and still he's like Yeek. i did you know, eat a lot i did eat a lot that not night. an ounce of fat on him I, I, I will say this that scott and i were very impressed when you said you see how much that dude put down and I'll, I'll, I can't even, I can't even retain. A that must have been muscle. after I left. I don't remember that, but yeah, that it was, was after like, you. It was after you left. I was like, dang, that dude eats like that. He looks like that. Oh. I was starving, dude. I was starving. I need, I need, a, I need that metabolism. Well, it's it come because I had to go like so far out of my way to go see you because you were in town. We like did this thing. I had to walk a bunch because I couldn't find the place. So I was burning off the calories before I even got in there. <laughs> That's what was really happening. You're the one that suggested it. Yeah, I know. I couldn't find it once I got in there. <laughs> <laughs> I like when I ask about what re what are some good restaurants. He starts uh, uh, telling me about some good pubs in town. You know, so here's mm -hmm. a good bar. They have some good food there. Okay, got it. Yeah, the got most it. important thing is the drinks, and it's then the liquid yeah, diet, liquid <laughs> diet. Mm -hmm. So I, I know, I know. If I, if I go. When I go visit Meg, she's going to say the same thing. I know a few good bars. Yeah. Meg's going Meg's to probably drink twice as much as me, and she's going to eat twice as much as me, too. And Matt's <laughs> yeah. going to sit there and be puzzled. Oh, yeah. He's not, it's not going to make any sense to him. He's like, how does she put that away? <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy me. But uh, anyway, so uh, this topic was one I've wanted for a couple of months now, especially when her new series uh came out on disney plus recently but ahsoka um i think everyone's pretty much knows my stance on ahsoka here but i do want to ask everyone just for honest opinions uh when she first got introduced it was in the clone wars movie right i went to go see that movie in theaters i was even excited i was off of the high from uh genie tartoski series and i was like you know what I will never judge a book by its cover again. That's because I was so against that series when I first saw it. I was like, the artwork looks horrendous. It's going to be, at first, you know, it was like going to be two minutes, three minutes long. I was like, yeah, micro episodes. Yeah, I was like, this is stupid. And I was blown away by how it was. So when they announced this one's going to be, you know, running 30 minute episodes, we're going to have a two hour movie. I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm so excited. And I walked out of that uh, theater embarrassed. <laughs> um, I I just and I, I think fifty percent of that dislike came from Ahsoka. No, I, it's got to be higher. I did not like Ahsoka 
at all. I knew she was going to be a character and everything, and they were going to bring her into the series as uh, Anakin's Padawan. I was like, okay, how's this going to work? Is he going to accidentally get the ma get her master killed, and maybe he has to take her on as an apprentice for now? You know, I thought that was what the story was going to be. You know, because why else would he have an apprentice? You know. And, you know, it made sense to me that, oh, well, he probably did something and that master died and he feels bad. So he's, you know, carrying Ahsoka for a little while until she finds another master, maybe it's something temporary. And then the way they did it, where all of a sudden they drop her off like an express mail package from Amazon and say, hey, Yoda says this is for you. What? Yeah, we're assigning we're assigning Padawans to masters now which never happens anywhere else. Any, we're never told of another master who has assigned a Padawan during this, only Anakin. It made no sense. I hated Snips. I hated Sky Guy references. I hated everything about it in the series as a whole. And I can't wait to rewatch this, but as a whole, I was 50-50 on it. And, and Luke knows, I've talked to him about this. When it dealt with just the clones, I love the series. I thought the series mm -hmm. was actually pretty solid there. But then when they threw Ahsoka in there, it just grinded me. It, I just could not stand anything about her. But that was uh, that from my very first impression from kickoff, I've never been a fan. But I want to know, I want to know honestly, when you first saw the movie and you first got your full experience of her, what were your thoughts, Ryan? I, I hate Ahsoka. I, I've hated this the the character for a long time, especially the movie in the first couple seasons of Clone Wars. Um, it to me it was always it, just a massive, massive retcon. <laughs> um, because th there there's no there's no way that anybody can convince me between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith that Anakin Skywalker had a Padawan. Um, there's no way you can convince me that if he did, that he had it for that length of time, that she was that important in his life. Um, it like all the way through from all the way throughout season seven that we get of the Clone Wars, where Ahsoka is literally like woven in between the events of Revenge of the Sith. Right. We just didn't uh, camera must have just turned off right before you know she popped into the hologram. Oh, you know, we just never mentioned this planet full of Mandalorians led by a former Sith Lord that you also brought back to life that a former Jedi Padawan is leading half a battalion worth of clone troopers on. That wasn't important in ending the war or like anything galactic stakes level that we didn't mention that in Revenge of the Sith. It was all to me in an effort to like, which I do get Ahsoka was an effort to give Anakin another reason to be distrustful of the Jedi or resentful of the Jedi with the way it ended, the way that the Jedi kind of betrayed her and she walks away and that in of itself, I understand that. Overall, the character was annoying to me. I found her to be far too powerful for her age level. Don't give me all this. Well, she was trained by Anakin. She started doing stuff in like episode four when she went toe to toe with Grievous. Uh, all right. The yeah. fact that she survived a, a corridor encounter with Grievous oh. for a, a heartbeat is a joke. Just one of the things that Grievous got totally nerfed on in Clone Wars. But from the beginning to the end of her arc, I thought they made her way too important. Um, I disliked her character greatly. And, you know, if she had just walked away at the end of season five and, you know, we never heard from her again and people just said, well, maybe she died in order 66, maybe she, whatever. Okay. But the fact that she survived through all that, I think it does significant damage, even more damage than it did to the between era, the pre prequels there. It does even more significant damage to star Wars as a whole for her to live and continue to be operating, continue to be using the force, continuing to do all these things that they're still having her do in Disney canon. Uh, I think Ahsoka is a a bad character that was overutilized and uh, should have died a long time ago, like George Lucas intended. <laughs> yeah, I, I will talk about the new canon in a minute, but yeah, I agree with you. I think she messed with the whole Ben. It, the whole Clone Wars about Ben and Anakin bonding together, becoming brothers during the Clone Wars. And I felt like the third wheel was Ahsoka just kind of sitting in the middle in between this relationship bonding that these two had to make during war. You know, I just I, I just thought mess up the whole formula. He, now, gets assigned to Soka, all, he, he gets assigned to Ahsoka like eight weeks or something after the events of Attack of the Clones, right? Like yeah. eight weeks after that? Are you, are you kidding me? Come on. Yeah. Now, Luke, you're on here because you, you are a big fan of the Clone Wars. I mean, that's, that's a, lot, a lot of things you love. And there is a lot mm -hmm. of stuff to love about it. And well, the thing so is, it got, it got me into Star Wars, so 
basically. Got, and, that, and that's fair. That's totally fair. And that's a, it's a big reason why people love your channel too, by the way. But yeah, uh, the Clone Wars videos were probably one of the most popular ones along with the older public. Definitely. Yes. Oh yeah. The older public too were big too, but I, I, I know you're a big fan. That's, that's, that's great. I have no problem with that. But I want to, what, what were your thoughts? Are you a fan initially or not? Or what, what were your um, thoughts when you first saw The thing it? is, uh, I, I was 12 years old in 2008, so I was born in 96. And uh, when you're much, much younger, you kind of um, experience things differently, you know. And I agree. Uh, officially, I'm an I, was, fan. I know what you mean. I, I was very excited for the movie, definitely, because it was something new. And I remember like 2005, 6, 7, 8. It's like, in my mind, at least, it feels like the golden era of Star Wars because Battlefront 2. We had the, the all six movies. Like the story was fully completed, as far as I was concerned, because I didn't know about the EU, and I was very satisfied with with the conclusion. I mean, it's technically not the conclusion with Episode Three, but you know what I mean. Like you get the whole picture from George. Then uh, the Battlefront games were amazing. Knights of the Old Republic, Force Unleashed. I loved it all. And then Clone Wars was coming out, and I was very excited. The thing is, um, I found Ahsoka to be annoying the first two seasons, basically. But it grew on me, because I grew with the series, basically. Mm. And uh, the thing is, uh, I don't have the same opinions as you guys do with that, but I completely get where you're coming from in regards to Anakin having a Padawan. It was confusing to me, too, because I thought he was the Padawan after Attack of the Clones, if you know what I mean. So I was like, yeah. okay. but the thing is, I just kind of accepted those things for the sake of enjoying it, and which is why I don't have a problem now, because it's accepted or whatever. And it, it's kind of weird, because I acknowledge that it's a mistake, kind of. It is, you know. Uh, I mean, uh, Anakin, uh, no. Yeah, Anakin meeting yeah. Dooku multiple times is as well, even though I accept it. By the, I mean, it's been years now. I accept it. So it is what it is now. Because the Clone Wars had some of the best Star Wars, in my opinion, in my opinion, that I've ever seen. Like the Mortis arc, I love it. And the Clone arcs are absolutely amazing, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and, and, I, and I can't wait to do my rewatch. A lot of people think I just hate everything about the Clone Wars. I didn't. In fact, I actually remember the first two seasons being very decent. Maybe even the first three seasons being decent, you know. And uh, I, anytime it dealt with just the clones, I thought it was good. I thought there were some good episodes at the very beginning. I think when Darth Maul started coming into it and everything else, it just kind of, for me, it kind of, you know, kind of ran its, uh, ha had its run. It was getting kind of old and I started not like turning against it a lot more. But uh, again, that it's, it's a, it's a great viewpoint that you're giving here because you're from a younger generation who grew up with this. I mean, this is like one of your cartoons and, uh, anyone 10 years older than me hates Ewoks. They think they're the stupidest things in the world. How could they ever beat you know, Imperial Stormtroopers? That's so dumb. Kevin J. Anderson, all the other, they think Ewoks are so dumb. I love them. And I can rationalize why Ewoks had the element of surprise and beat up on some Imperials. That makes total sense. I mean, I'm totally fine with that. Same Someone here. who is also younger uh, is a Jar. There are Jar Jar fans. There are uh, you know prequel fans who say the prequels are just as good, if not better, than the originals. I don't agree with that ever. But I can't disagree with someone else who grew up at that time. Because if you're 9 or 10 years old, and you're going to see episode 1, and there's a 9 and 10 year old boy, Anakin Skywalker, automatically in your head, you're that kid. You're living the event. And so this is all you, baby. And as you're growing up, you know, as you went from 10 to 12, 13, you know, when the new movie came out, you're feeling the angst of the, you know, the teenager type uh, Anakin uh, Skywalker that we got in episode two. So it's just all resonating with that younger generation. Like, yeah, you know, and I totally get that. So that's a great perspective. Uh, Meg, you like women. <laughs> characters. <laughs> so what did you think of Ahsoka? So I think I fall somewhere in between you and Ryan and Luke, where when I saw the Clone Wars movie, I feel like to a certain extent, I think marketing as a movie was maybe a mistake because it's just several episodes 
just running all together. And so I think people had expectations of like, this is a movie. And then instead it's just like, no, these are the pilot episodes for the shows. I did in the first season find Ahsoka annoying. And I think too, I was thinking like, wait, and Anakin has a Padawan? Like when she showed up in the Clone Wars movie, I'm like, oh, well, Obi-Wan's going to get a Padawan. And then this is going to, you know, maybe lead to some sort of division <laughs> between her and Anakin because they're both, you know, competing for Obi-Wan's attention. Uh, obviously, that was not what happened. <laughs> um, but I found her character more interesting as she developed, like as the series progressed. I feel like Number one, getting her out of that crop top outfit was a vast improvement. Um, <laughs> I, I just hate, I hate that first outfit she wears. I hate it. Um, and two, I could see how she was serving, like for Luke, as an entry point into Star Wars, where for people who maybe, you know, hadn't seen the prequel trilogies in the theaters to now start watching the Clone Wars, like that was their entry point to Star Wars, like, they are the same age as Ahsoka there. Like, oh, you know, I, I'm interested in this character and then fleshing out more. I sort of, I like the ending, you know, the original ending of Clone Wars before they added the final season where it's her walking away. I thought that that explained a lot of like why we never saw her afterwards. Um I mean, I thought that some of the stuff in the final season was very moving, but I also was like, I feel in a way like it was fixing a problem that it didn't need to fix. Like, I I'm cool with her just like going off into the sunset. Um, yeah, cause, cause then you're, you're stuck in this era where, okay, you're going to have her fight Darth Maul, but we know that Darth Maul lives. We know that she lives. Yeah. Like we, we know all these things. So you're getting forced into these situations that you have to address and it really, it removes a lot of the the tension that could have been there. I hear what yeah. you're saying. Um, and I think the way that I wish they had approached the Clone Wars uh, 3D show is that, because this is what annoys me, like with the essential reader's companion where they're trying to fit it within like the, the Clone Wars round one stories. And I almost wish it had been like, like um, expanding universe was one take and like this is a second take instead of which is I feel like in the end what they ended up doing with new canon is um, you know turning everything into legends and just going forward with the Clone Wars like they don't fit together well it, it never fit and they tried their best to make excuses and move timelines but it, it just simply didn't no um and I, like the I don't know the the couple novels that they did, the tie-in novels, um, you know, with like TCW, like tying it into the EU. Mm -hmm. I, I a couple of those are okay, and I think like the books themselves, like standalone, are okay, but they just don't fit into that era. And I think it's none of the Clone Wars fits. Like TCW does not fit with the movies. That is the biggest sin of the entire show. Luke brought up the multiple times that Dooku faces Obi-Wan and Anakin. We know that didn't happen. We know for a fact that didn't happen. What they do and how they, they embarrass Grievous over and over again, they completely nerf him. So by the time Revenge of the Sith comes around, why would you even be intimidated by this person? Why would anyone really be intimidated by this person? Anakin's personality doesn't fit. Like, it, it does not fit like the evolution between Attack of the Clones and that we see through Revenge of the Sith. It's a different person. It's a different Anakin. And some people might like that Anakin more. Some people might be favorable towards that Anakin. They like a little bit more like goofy, you know, playful side of him. Yeah. But that's that's not the character. That, that's not the character that's been established in the movies. And so to me, that's why there's always a big t disconnect watching TCW. And when it comes to Ahsoka, I think all she ever should have been was an amplifier to Anakin's story and a little bit more reason for him to distrust the Jedi and the, the, the order of the Jedi. Um, that's She was never meant to be the most important character ever. She was never meant to be the, this, the new savior of Star Wars, which is what Dave Filoni has like made sure to make her into. The Gandalf of Disney Star Wars. <laughs> Dave Filoni, who can't let his little fetish die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. Right. First off, I, I believe you're correct. I, I, we... 
we need to talk about the Clone Wars in general sometime, and I'm going to have Luke back for this, but I do agree that I think it contradicted more than complimented Episode 3, whereas um, I think Tartovsky's complimented Episode 3. I mean, when you, you look at what Grievous did and, you know, Tartovsky's just cartoon. I mean, oh my gosh, he took out what? Six Jedi, four Jedi, and they're scared as they hear him stomping. You know, they hear him is stomping. That's scary. Yeah, that makes it that makes us fear him. Get ready, because Grievous is coming. It's bad stuff. Whereas this one, you're right. He's he's going toe to toe against Ahsoka and, and getting beat. So why why do we care when Obi Wan faces him later on? Um, but also to to Meg's point here, it, it, it Ahsoka was made to get little girls excited too, just the way they, they got excited about Anakin. Hey, let's see if they can put Ahsoka in their shoes. And I, I think it was just done wrong. I, I don't think she should have been a Padawan for him. Maybe she's the, the like, he's the hottest thing from, he's the youngest, you know, maybe uh, male to ever come out from a Jedi Knight. Well, she's the youngest female to become, get her Jedi Knight status. And maybe they, you know, team her up with Anakin just to kind of teach him a little bit of you know, humility on both ways, you know, something like that. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, there's there's different ways to introduce the characters. You definitely want to have someone younger in there. I get it. it's a cartoon. Uh, you definitely want people that they can connect with and everything. But uh, I think it could have been done differently. Now, for her stories that uh, she had in the EU, just like uh, Ryan said, there was a couple of uh, tie-in novels. I, I thought they were fine. I, I reread them. I, I remember I liked one and didn't like the other. But now rereading them both, I thought, you know what? They, these aren't bad. Um, I kind of enjoyed them both. They're, they're not that bad as opposed to other clone wars novels that are just most of the most most of the the absolute terrible worst uh expanding universe stories came from some of those novels in that era i mean i don't know what what the deal was with the clone wars and why they just couldn't you know um what cessus deception and um uh, what was what was alan dean foster's i can never remember the name of the it. approaching storm uh, approaching oh storm my. was well approaching storm was like a direct prequel to attack of the clones basically oh okay okay so that doesn't count but still you might I mean, be thinking of jedi trial jedi trials terrible too <laughs> but, but but the thing is though um uh, she had some that's those clone wars digest comic books you know I, i've read them they're okay you know they're okay nothing too special they never really built anything around us and you're right at, at the end she just kind of walked away from the order and um that was it now the new canon they do they continue her story and yes. move her along uh i'm going to start with luke here luke what have what do you i mean you've you've watched some of the shows you kind of know she was she was in rebels is this correct yeah yeah definitely Okay. Um, what wh what do you think about? Did did she get better? Did they change her character? I haven't seen any of this. So I'm 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 interested in your um, opinion. The thing is with the rebels, um, I was kind of disappointed because I grew up. Uh, basically, Clone Wars got me into the EU. That's like the that that's probably like the biggest reason I got deeper into Star Wars. You know, and when when Disney bought it and canceled it, I was very disappointed with with rebels because the animation is a obvious downgrade like immediately visible and you feel like it's disneyfied i mean it was 2014 then and it felt disneyfied i, I wouldn't say it the same way now when i, I rewatched it a year ago and to be honest i enjoy it even more the first uh, the second time i watched it because when it was out i disliked a lot of characters i called ezra space aladdin with the uh, slingshot, like ridiculous. Yeah. It's still ridiculous, to be honest. That's like still stupid, but I accept <laughs> it. Like, what, what the hell? And the thing is, uh, Ahsoka there, uh, as a, as a Clone Wars fan with a canceled series that never what, that was never finished, I was actually very happy when I heard the DC 15s of the clones because seeing on screen seeing uh characters from the clone wars in the galactic civil war era was like a big deal for me because it was like some it was so un unusual and uh since i always delved into headcanon territory i know it's heresy to some of you <laughs> i always liked uh, return of the jedi as the happy ending despite liking the eu after it and the thing is having rex which was my favorite clone trooper of them all with ahsoka was like a satisfying conclusion, especially since Ahsoka in Rebels is not considered a Jedi at all. 
not not i mean they called her a gray jedi but it, that was just like fan fiction it's mm -hmm. never stated she's just basically an exile or something like that a force right. user ex jedi so i was completely fine with that although the thing is they did some time traveling stuff yeah i don't know how to, how to deal with that but well they had they had to find a way to save her you know? yeah, the, the thing is uh knowing where the story goes after it like screw it completely because as far as I, I would just end it with return of the jedi rebel rebels basically ends with return of the jedi mentioning the battle of endor everything's captain rex was promoted to commander that. blah 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 whatever it's a it's a i i enjoy the conclusion but with what they did after that she's over spammed she ahsoka because of them so i'm fine with clone wars and rebels mm -hmm. i'm happy with that but now ahsoka is in tales of the jedi the ahsoka series and the mandalorian that's and, five and series book of, and book of now. boba fett and book of boba fett that's six series now they over spammed ahsoka in the past three years so much that i i outright dislike seeing her now i used to enjoy it before now i completely dislike her character in the past three years from everything new that they've released i don't care anymore i'm i'm done I'm completely it, done. With it's it. the perfect yeah. example of them just over, like making a character more important than she should have been, overstaying yeah. her welcome and overusing the character. Because and the saturation of the character in all yeah. these worlds is just like she's not special, she's not interesting. So she, you don't think there was any good changes in her. You thought she actually got worse, is it your in your opinion? Um, the thing is, uh, the more the, the more there is of something the less special it is and that is exactly what star wars is suffering from and, and when you uh and it's especially what ahsoka specifically is suffering from because there's too much of her it's not special anymore at all and the live action stuff and disney spamming 10 freaking shows in like three years has diluted it to that to that degree that it's just like a random crap show of sci-fi stuff like i don't care about it anymore at all like every show is like me rolling my eyes when i hear about it like mm -hmm. i don't care back when it was just one series eventually two i i found it quite satisfying that actually it was three if you count the clone wars from 2003 i approve of it definitely but the thing is it, it felt kind of wholesome having one ser animated series in the prequel era and another in the original trilogy era like i would just end it there don't overuse it and simply make it not special anymore and what they did they made how many book of boba fett obi-wan ahsoka and andor four series about one character each i approve of andor it was extremely well done but the rest is just crap it's it's so bad it's unneeded and the writing is horrible oh yeah and ahsoka now it and i think if you end ahsoka's arc again should should have died should have died during order 66 should have died a long time ago never should have survived to the galactic civil war era but if you're going to do that and you bring her into season two of rebels have her die at the hands of vader like have that be her end that was a powerful moment that was a powerful moment for everybody it, it was you a get, good, very yeah, good moment. yeah you get that fan service you get that finality that people were looking for and ahsoka you know dies you know gives up her life to let ezra and kanan get away with the holocron and to face her master because she's not going to leave him again she's not going to run away from him again that's a powerful moment it would and have been a yeah. conclusion definitely it, it would have been yeah. an awesome yeah. conclusion and darth vader walks out after destroying finally that last little link well one of more little last link that he had to his humanity um, it would have also given the luke uh like more of a boost because he did what she couldn't yeah right yeah um but so it, instead, it would have been a, a very good conclusion as well even though it, it didn't end that end that way i mean i'm fine with her i like the idea of her meeting luke you know like at the end of return of the jedi or something i like that idea oh, but no, this yuck. would have been a completely solid ending to the character i i i think that um for people that love the character of Ahsoka, I do think they would lo have loved to see that reunion between her and Luke and for them to tell each other about how what they knew uh, about, you know, the fa and for her, for her to learn that Luke 
had redeemed Anakin, that Anakin was Anakin again when he died. That would be a powerful moment if yeah. you like the character. Um, but instead what they do, this character that I laid it all out, all the important things she did, how, how involved she was in Revenge of the Sith. Oh, by the way, she ends up at Padme's funeral. Oh, by the way, she links up with Bail Organa. Oh, by the way, she starts the freaking rebellion, right? <laughs> like, it, this character cannot be involved in more than she actually, it, it, you couldn't invent something that was like, wow, it's more convenient or she got pushed in this or that. They've made her involved in everything. And then you invent, well, you introduce time travel in the world between worlds in order to save her in order to save ahsoka because Filoni can't let her die what else would he well i'm not going to say that on this channel um <laughs> but uh and, and so then she survives she's alive during the events of uh like she's alive during the events of the galactic civil war doesn't show up doesn't help or anything just sits there i, I don't know why maybe that'll be explained by dave floney another spin-off animated series that'll have more dwindling ratings because nobody cares about him or his character anymore um and then we get what we get in mando in ahsoka now ahsoka goes to a different galaxy now ahsoka goes to the world between worlds again gets saved from death again this time to have some interaction with Anakin that she didn't even need. What what lesson did she learn from that? She she had already like confronted Anakin. She had already refused to run away. Like, oh my gosh, that, that was, that was so like stupid. complete nostalgia bait. The thing is, yeah. everyone was hyped because nostalgia. But uh, I mean, I try to enjoy the series because I'm always negative about everything. And the thing is, every time I say something that it's going to be that I don't like it already, oh, you didn't you didn't even watch the series. You, you just hate everything. You're just a hater. It happened with Kenobi, happened with almost everything. And the thing is, eventually I end up being right because as soon as the series ended, everyone starts hating it. But while the series is going, you're not allowed to criticize in the Star Wars fan base because no one can look past two meters in front of them, basically which I don't no, understand. No one's ever called Ryan a hater. So Luke, he doesn't, that's kind of a foreign thing to him. Um, yeah, I do. I do think that's ridiculous. What, what Charles, I don't know any of this about, well, I didn't know any of this, but yeah, her dying at the hands of Luke would have been good, but what is she doing during the original trilogy? She's been alive all this time sitting on her hands. Cause they really could have used some extra help. You think Obi-Wan would have gone, Hey, there is another, my sister. No, Ahsoka. Oh, but no, to be no, fair, for, to be fair, we have a lot of uh, surviving Jedi in the era entirely. We like, have way too many. I, I, I completely agree. The, the with thing that. is, we, we have Ram Coda, we have Star Killer, we have X1, X2, we have Kyle Katarn, we, you know, although Kyle Katarn yeah. is actually like, really count, a bit off. Yeah. 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 But the thing is, there's a lot. There's Kyle Katarn's, uh, what's his face though? Uh, the Jedi Master, who he gets his. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of surviving Jedi. <laughs> I agree. There's way too many. It's a, it's a it's a common trope they use way too much, and now when you add it up, it's like, well, who did die during Order sixty six? Only the idiots. But, but everyone but else seems to have escaped. But it's one thing to have a, a random like one in ten thousand Jedi that survives. It's a different thing when it's a character who would hear the name Skywalker, who would hear the the name. Oh, this kid named Skywalker just blew up the Death Star. This kid named Skywalker, apparently he's got some new Jedi powers, he's got a lightsaber, whatever, who would like hear this. That's true. And Enough. not seek him out. Come on. Yeah. It's, so, it's, it goes beyond like suspension of disbelief. She doesn't exist. This is, not a, this is not a real character. This is not a serious character. There is no way that you can justify this character existing within the framework of the movies. You just can't. You know what's weird about it? That George Lucas was involved in the Clone Wars. Like, yeah. I watched the documentaries and everything. Oh, yeah. And he didn't seem to have a problem with it at all. And I I, I think that he would have idea. a problem with stuff like that. It was his idea to introduce a, an apprentice for Anakin. Like, uh, uh, but it was also... Right. But it was of having her die. Correct. With the intention of having her die. Um, and, and again, that the reason being, that's one of the things that makes Anakin, like, the way he was and the way he felt about the Jedi. Um, and that's what George intended. Dave Floney has admitted that. It, there's this little slimy that that scumbag. There's this little slimy interview where he's like, you know, I, I was. Uh, it's not really a secret that uh, I was always in the Ahsoka lives camp, and George was always in the Ahsoka dies camp. Like he, he's those straight from the words, the lispy mouth of Dave Filoni. Like that's what he said that he intentionally violated George Lucas's wishes for this character. 
the thing is, uh, I would think that if George would say something, that would be the end of it because it's his franchise. It was under him. So I, I'm kind of surprised that it actually passed. If you know what I mean, like, well, I mean, they I didn't. Think they, George, they didn't do. George, he has one more authority season over se- Dave Filoni, right? Season seven wasn't until Disney. So I technically I mean, considered that, like, with the rest of the Clone Wars, because I read that I read the novel, although they retconned a lot of it. So I kind of can. I when I, when I talk trash about Disney Star Wars, I always purposely don't mention Clone Wars season seven because I liked it. <laughs> Even the crap parts, but I like it. <laughs> well, you don't get to do that though, right? It's the thing is, like, I don't get I don't get hyped about anything anymore. And Clone Wars was like the only thing I had left. I was gonna you say, know? but Clone Wars meant a lot to you as a kid and everything, so it makes sense that you would grow up and still. Uh, the thing is, life, uh, right? my YouTube channel was based on it. Um, the Lego played a big part in loving the Clone Wars because. I don't know if you can see it's, it's a mess. I'd rather not stand up because it's almost 5 a.m. and I'm, I only have a hoodie on. So <laughs> so I'd rather not do that. Thanks for painting that. I mean, image. take a look. I have Legos everywhere. Like, it's a, a clone army over there, as you can see. Oh, yeah, Please. nice. Actually, I'm just going to turn off the camera and I'm. give me a sec. Okay, we'll give you a second. <laughs> I'm getting all sexy there, Meg. How did you? How do you feel? I don't know how much of the live action stuff you've watched. If you saw Ahsoka or what? Yeah, but. Meg, your thoughts? Yeah, so I sort of agree with Luke. Like when she showed up in season two of Rebels. Oh, look here, at all that. Let's look at this for a minute. Hold on. Look at that. Wow. That's awesome. You painted all these? No, not really. It's oh. basically just uh, uh, different. came from China, but it's oh very good God. quality, which I'm really surprised by. Yeah. To be honest. So, yeah. Wow. I had those little cool. kids in the sweatshop working overtime to paint those. Look great. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Go for it. Meg, yeah. Sorry. What was I saying? Um, yeah, I, I was I was excited because the last we saw of her, she walked away. And then to see that she's, you know, serving the rebellion in this intelligence role, I'm like, that's that's perfect for her. She's not a Jedi anymore, but she's still working. And I do think that that confrontation between her and Vader, that moment when she realizes, like, this is Anakin Skywalker. This is what he's become. Like, that was a powerful moment. And, like, the the world between worlds... I thought that the stuff in there where, you know, Ezra's like, can I save Kanan? I, I thought that was interesting. But then I was like, when he when he pulls Ahsoka out, I was like, no. Like, I felt like her presumed death there had meaning. And then I, I, I feel a lot like Luke that there's just been oversaturation of her where, you know, she pops up in The Mandalorian and she's in one episode and she's not really helpful. She's like, baby's name is Grogu. Go see someone else. And I'm like, gee, thanks. She, she's job. like, I. she's like, doesn't want to assume the responsibility. She's like, yeah. I've seen what happens when, you know, people with power go dark and whatever. And it's like, it would be too dangerous for me to train him. So I'm just going to send you to a random rock and hope <laughs> to God that somebody shows up, that Luke Skywalker maybe shows up to take control and that like all the other bad things that could possibly happen don't happen. <laughs> right, that other people with bad intentions don't get a hold of this person. Great job, Ahsoka. You're so responsible. To be honest, um, I, I I really don't don't like live action treatments of animated characters, except for Saw Gerrera. I liked Forrest Whitaker. I like what they did with him, despite him not really looking as much as the Saw Gerrera from the Clone Wars. But I I see what they did with the Bad Batch and the games. Quite enjoyed it to be honest. I try to enjoy as much as I can because it's it's a rarity these days, especially that you know uh, the era between the original trilogy and the prequels. But overall, like Ahsoka live action is, you know what annoys me there? Um, Rosario Dawson wanted to be Ahsoka, and then the Leku were too long to have an action scene. Like uh, it, it annoys me to that degree that there are thousands of fans that would look way more like Ahsoka, much more than Rosario Dawson. 
and would have the leku that's what they're called right if mm. the head tails as long as it as they need to be like they were, were in rebels and everything but no we are so petty actually that's not even the word i can't think of the think of the word since english is not my main uh, my first language but... Dave, Dave Filoni, it's it's very casual. It's a very nonchalant way of changing things. The thing and is, I don't get uh, the actress gets to complain. She got the, the role. It's as if they don't have CGI or something. They make these stupid continuity errors, the small ones. It, it's a, it is a detail, but it shows that they just don't give a crap anymore. Well, I, I don't so know. What I to... understand, Ahsoka, I'm sorry to interrupt. Ahsoka had a novel, right? Yes. Yes. Like a YA novel, and, it, and now that is totally yeah, it's contradicted. void. There has been contradicted by Tales yeah. of the Jedi completely, like three times. And, and even wow. and even in uh, season seven of Clone Wars with the color of the lightsabers too, right? And and the way uh, the Siege of Mandalore plays out, it's yeah. completely different because uh, Order sixty six happens when they captured Maul on Mandalore under a shield generator or something like that, if I remember correctly. But over here, it was in a in a banner. Although uh, I, the thing is, when something like that happens, if I want, if I enjoyed something, I simply choose what I enjoyed more. But overall, it's a very stupid thing to do, especially since uh, some something that also annoys me with Disney canon ever since they started was they talk shit about the EU, and then they do the same thing even worse. Well, like they assign a, a storyboard. Not going to let that happen. That was all over the things like, we're going to make sure we have one continuity. We have a story group that's going to ensure every story matters. Everything is canon. Completely Equal ridiculous. Movies. It, it, and they have totally, there is no there is no story group anymore. D D Dave Filoni no gives group. less of a shit about that than anybody there, too. He yeah, very cavalierly will change things. And to be fair, listen, I, I love George to death. George changed a lot of things yeah. <laughs> on, on a whim, right? Yeah. But when Absolutely. when you're the one that when you're the one that created everything, I think we right or wrong, we give you more of a pass, right? Yeah. Because you're you're the guy that created when you were somebody else, when you're a custodian of something that someone else created, I don't think you get to do that. Especially yeah. when you've set up this entire thing. There's a reason you decanonized 150 novels and said everything's gonna be all in lockstep now. And then you just hand like hand wave away um the decisions that you make to contradict other things same with kanan kanan's order 66 interaction was completely retcon for bad batch even though there's a yeah. comic book run that shows him escaping order 66 um like why, why are yeah. you supposed to be yeah. invested if what they tell you is just a lie and dave filoni will come in and do whatever he wants yeah and, and again it, it to, but to be fair to george lucas he always said he's not beholden to right. what lucasfilm's story is he said you can go and make your story and put on continuity but if i come back and make movies some you know if i like it i'll put it in like yeah. coruscant you know and a few other things he loved isla um, secura yeah isla secura because he read the comic books yeah, well, and, and whether whether it's vehicles or planets or characters or he, he, inter, he interwove so many of the things that they used to build out this universe into what he wanted to do and then if there were changes or if he had a change like you know, when he told everybody initially that Clone Wars took place a lot further apart than it did, you know what I mean? He made changes and everybody had to adjust. Exactly. exactly. I think another, one of my problems with, well, like the first season of Ahsoka that just came out is that it, it was an entire season of setup. Like, I feel that Rebels season one still told a story like it's introducing you to Kanan and to Hera and to Ezra and Sabine, but you're still telling a story throughout the season. And like a season one of Ahsoka just seemed to be setting up Thrawn's in another galaxy and he's allied with the Night Sisters and they get there. And like, that's where it cuts off. And I'm like, this is not. You're not telling a complete story here. Like, I, I know that obviously, you know, you're not going to tell the whole thing in one season, but like, you're not even telling a complete story for a season. You see, that's the thing that I've been I've been warning about kind of in my community post for years. The thing is, people don't get that when they start demanding from Disney, make a series about this or a movie about this. I've heard that for every single possible thing what happens is star wars becomes the marvel cinematic universe you never have a conclusion it's always a setup for the next thing and the next thing and the next thing or uh, og star wars had a 
the beginning, a middle, and an end. And that's the way it should be. Because this, to me, uh, not having a plan and constantly setting something up and intertwining it to become the next MCU reeks of them not have not knowing what the hell they are doing. They're just making it for the sake of it being and, made. And and no, they just don't have a plan. There is no plan. That's they the thing. Have a plan. It's just like just carry and just do whatever. And it's been so mismanaged. And I, I, we're getting kind of off topic here a little bit, but I will say this: that the whole rumor that Ka this is it for Kathleen Kennedy, this is it for Kathleen Kennedy. I guarantee you, this is what this is. This is how things went down. One of the caveats. I bet you anything. That Disney, that Bob Iger and them had to agree with when he signed Lucasfilm. I was like, hey, look, Kathleen Kennedy, I will appoint who is head of her Lucasfilm. You may not let her go until she she leaves on her terms. And they've agreed. They agreed to that. I, that makes perfect sense to me that George would be like, you're in charge. You have it. But she's running it until she puts down, you know, leaves the throne. I almost, I'm almost positive George made a comment because like, he's worked with Kathleen Kennedy for movies for decades. He trusts her. He trusted her. Uh, you know, he thought that she would be in good hands. He didn't want anything happening. So Kathleen Kennedy gets to leave on her terms. That's the whole thing. Because to be honest, how she's run it is just, I mean, I, I know Ryan may disagree, but she's done a terrible job running running Lucasville. Sorry. I <laughs> tried. Tried. I tried, but I think I honestly believe I honestly believe with all the mistakes she's made with all the just it's just been a madhouse of this story. This story It's just throwing crap on the wall, seeing what sticks. It's like, have you just gone insane? Have you gone insane? Uh I, I think there'd be a much better chance of her like actually getting fired if every single other like department or little studio within Disney wasn't also going through like massive struggles. Marvel yeah. is doing the same thing. Pixar has been going through the same thing. Disney animation has been going through the same thing. It's a Disney problem. Um, yeah, yeah. Like D Disney, I think it, at the core of it is a problem. But in terms of Kathleen Kennedy, um, uh, Kathleen Kennedy isn't in there. I've said this before. Kathleen Kennedy isn't in there like making a change to the script. Be like, make sure to have the strong, powerful woman look at the man in disgust right here. Like, that's not she's doing. Oh, she's hot, like she's hiring people to make things. She's hiring people that she probably thinks align with what her vision is and are making mm -hmm. things that she wants them to make. Yeah. She, that's why she's promoted Dave Filoni three times in the past like five years, right? It's because he aligns with her vision for Star Wars. Luke, Luke, does Dave Filoni save Star Wars? Um, the thing is, I used to really like the guy. He seemed kind of genuine. and of uh, But did. I, underst I, mean, I, I understood the criticisms yeah. of him retconning stuff. But after the last three years, ever since the live action crap started with the TV shows and too much Star Wars, no way. Like, I'm, I'm over it. Like, I don't give a crap. Uh, he doesn't give a crap. Like, Dave Filoni doesn't care anymore at all. He's He has left the building. He doesn't give a shit. He only cares about Ahsoka existing for the sake of existing. He, thing, he, I think I he cares about his vision for Star Wars. I think that's what he cares about is his vision for Star Wars. Awesome. I think he, he says a lot of things that sound right about honoring what came before. But when you look at like the body of work and you look at the way he's treated some of these characters, it doesn't align. After um, 11 years of Disney Star Wars, I don't buy it anymore at all. Yeah. And I, they lost me. this is also a guy who was in the room while they were planning out the sequels. There's quotes of him talking about how powerful it would be for the matriarchy to subvert the patriarchy and for Leia to be the mentor figure instead of Luke because the audience wouldn't expect it. And we've had too many male heroes in Star Wars. This is the same Dave Filoni that went to the feminist conference and you know, bitched out fans, same guy. But yeah, I I, that to, as well. to me, 2019, when I first started on YouTube, when I talked bad about Dave Filoni, I caught a lot of flack. I got a lot of hate for talking bad about the savior, the wonder boy, Dave Filoni. Now in 2023, not so much. Um, the thing is, I got a lot of flack for more, doing though. a video with, with you. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute! You got in trouble for Ryan. To I get in trouble for hanging out with Ryan. Hey, you know, you know what's the thing? On the I don't give a shit what it's they like think. Pariah, when it comes to that stuff. I don't care at all. Like I, I have a friend. He's called Star Wars Elseworlds. He makes like a uh, fan and stuff uh, regarding Star Wars. He got a lot of hate for just uh, being good with me. But what I respect about him, he didn't go against me. 
uh, despite the pressure, they tried to take down his General Grievous Jedi mod from the uh, Nexus mods and everything. They tried to cancel him, all because we had this Discord, Discord chat about uh, modern audiences and all the crap that they're pushing, basically. And he was harassed for two years straight, but he stayed true till the end. So Good. I don't regret um, Ryan okay. at all. Uh, yeah, there you go. So anyway, uh, getting back on track here, uh, we know kind of what what's been well, y'all know what's been going on in her uh, ledge, uh, her uh, not uh, her canon, I guess Disney canon life. Uh, how if you could write the ending to Ahsoka in the expanded universe, you know the legend storyline, how would it end, Meg? Well, that's a good one. I mean, I feel like. There are enough examples in the EU of people escaping Order 66. Like we know, we know Scout did, um, he joined up with a uh, Callista's Masters group. So I wouldn't necessarily have her dying with Order 66, but I think I would love to see that moment of like her connecting with Luke. Like, you know, she's turned her back on the Jedi Order. She's not a Jedi anymore, but almost like, you know, maybe she's off somewhere doing something. And then like she hears the, you know, sort of like Luke said, Return of the Jedi, she hears the name Skywalker and she's like, Skywalker. And then she's sort of like, you know, she, she tracks him down and she's like, hey, I got to tell you about your dad. Like, uh, and then, you know, she doesn't need to do anything important. Just like a lovely moment like that, I feel like would have been a way to like because i think fans wanted that like wanted her interacting with luke you know or at least being able to tell him more that he didn't know okay all right there you I go agree, uh, actually look, say what i agree completely with that specifically because i'm tired of the moral relativity when it comes to writing stories where everything is gray all the time I want to go back to simpler things where it's good versus evil and where the ending is wholesome, like in The Lord of the Rings. I'm really tired of the uh, gray morality of everything, where everything has to be about feelings. Everyone, every single character is broken because of their past. I'm tired of all, the, all those story tropes, which are like overused as hell in the past years because everyone is about feelings and crap like that, basically. So... I would love a wholesome ending just as Return of the Jedi is a wholesome ending on its own. So uh, life is too complicated for me to invent too many things. So I'll just keep it as, as it is with Clone Wars and Rebels and to hell with it. I would love to see a wholesome ending with Luke and finding out about Anakin's redemption. Who cares? Okay. All right. Ryan. Do you agree with that? Or you'd have a different ending for a <laughs> she, she living in my ending. Uh, my ending would be after a season that the season five finale is Ahsoka's like walking away from Anakin, right? Mm -hmm. Right after it, the mute, like right after it cuts to the, you know, the music and the end credits, it's actually like Anakin as Ahsoka's like walking up, you know, to the edge. Uh, uh, Anakin says, Ahsoka, I'm sorry. And Ahsoka like turns around and she's about to say, it's okay, Anakin. But then a drunk in a speeder like in, in a speeder just goes quite the wrong way clips somebody tumbles and just takes ahsoka out and kills her right in front of anakin and that's how she dies that's the end of ahsoka's story that doesn't need to be anything more than that because she's not an important character she's not an important person she deserves to die like that and then anakin you know moves on moves about his fear like a meet joe black there the look out that, that could have been you know, you know the story arc where obi-wan is killed and undercover mm -hmm. you might as well have just had ahsoka actually die with with a sniper shot or something like that actually there you go I remember how how much it drove anakin insane how dark it was on his uh, from his point of view because obi-wan was dead when he thought, like, yeah when he thought obi-wan died yeah, yeah. maybe hey all right if you want to get a little more credit all right palpatine sets up a scenario he hires cad bane to kill ahsoka on the foot of the jedi temple like that just to further like his like how upset he gets and his emotional turmoil that he might be in to take advantage. How about that? There you go. Or maybe you know the unfinished either way she story. has to die. 
technically, yeah. But what about the unfinished storyline where she goes underneath the Jedi Temple to the ancient Sith Temple and is supposedly, if I remember correctly, Sidious was there on the other side of the door and like the red lightsabers started going through it, but she escaped. Instead of that, you have her be killed by Sidious there or something like that and somehow staged for Anakin to see and break down completely. Might work. I don't know. Yeah. My, mine, mine is kind of infamous at this point, but I will repeat it for anyone who hasn't heard it. Um, she she does walk away from the Jedi Order. She goes, she lands on the planet of the Hoojibs from the Marvel comic books. Hoojibs are like little fluffy space bunnies. And as she's walking on the planet for her first time, she accidentally trips over a Hoojib, falls down a long hole and breaks her neck at the bottom. And we find out later on that's not just a hole. It is a freshly dug Hoojib latrine that the Hoojibs continue to utilize until it is full and then they just move on and no one knows she's missing. So that's, I know, Meg, it's just, it's horrible. It's horrible. But you know what? I, I, that's how much I, I just do not you know, like her. But I, I, mean, I, I didn't do any retcon. I, I would kill her during the Rod of the Hut mission. All right. Oh. Like, Right at the very beginning. Hey, Anakin, looks like you're not fit for an apprentice. Sorry, buddy. We gave that to you too soon. It never happened. They go back in time and kill her at the beginning, you mean? The rebels yeah. do? Okay. Use, use the world between worlds and uh, kill Ahsoka on your first <laughs> mission. I'm so I glad it, the world between worlds. I find it hilarious that Matt imagine. actually put a lot of thought into it. A lot of thought. <laughs> like a lot of thought. There you go. There you go. I want to thank all my guests for being on here. And being on here... Uh, for the whole year for Meg there. It's been great having Meg become a, a regular for us. She became a regular this year. It's always good having my good friend Luke on here, and I will have him back uh, sooner, sooner rather than later. And Ryan, of course, you've been here since the beginning, so thank you. Uh, Merry Christmas to all three of you. I don't know what you expect to be getting for Christmas, but I will make a recommendation of something that I just saw today that came out. I don't know if anyone's heard about this, but a disturbance in the force, how the Star Wars holiday special happened it is based off the novel that came out. I don't know if anyone read the novel. Um, this is an old not paperback novel they, that, that I can't remember who wrote it, but how it happened it is an insane story. I've not seen this documentary is what I'm guessing it is, but uh, I definitely want to see it. So the holiday special. I don't I don't know. Ryan, you've seen it, correct? I, I haven't. What, the holiday special or the documentary thing? No, the holiday special. I've seen the holiday special, yeah. There is that new doc out there I, I have not watched yet, though. Yeah, that just came out, though. That just came I out. I believe so, Meg, yeah. Meg, what about you? Did you ever see the holiday special? I have unfortunately seen the holiday special. Oh. <laughs> Luke, what about you? I've seen it. Cringed. I like some part. I liked some parts of it, but uh, uh, like the close-up Wookie shots are pure. Yeah, cute. I kind of. That's neat. And you know what? I'm a sucker for the B Arthur scene. I don't. Fast I love the B Arthur scene. I love it, and you know she's in Fate of the Jedi. Yeah, yeah. Just, which just, I, which, just a brief bit, but it's one of my favorite EU Easter eggs they've ever done. Is is put her Akinita. in there. Because Akina, yeah, and I was like, wait a minute. They said she's an old biddy who likes to you know, work at the bar and sing. I was like, get out of here. Get out of here. Make Actually, sure it's Jedi. Let's video. do this. Be, more B author in Star Wars is what we need. It's too bad Dizzy well, didn't have B author. They'd be really, you know, raking in the cash, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, folks, and let us know in the comments. Uh, what did you think about Ahsoka? Be honest here. I mean, did you if you if you're around Luke's age, you probably grew up liking her and stuff. You like the Clone Wars, you like accept everything about it. Maybe you didn't like her when she got to Disney Canon, or maybe you've always hated her, you know, or maybe you say you hate her, but you secretly like her, like Brian says. <laughs> Either way, though, you know, let us know in the comments, and uh, we will see you next time on a more civilized age.